Hey guys, welcome back. So now getting into the conclusion of House of X, which landed on a couple of predictions and I put a few out there that was wild. But with this conclusion starting off with a month ago and then catching up with now, it only hits the marks that it needs to and saves a bit for later. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so as we know, with the huge shift with everything that's been going on with House of X and Powers of Ten, we're definitely being set up for new titles. With Dawn of X, Uncanny X-Men, a new Excalibur series, Fallen Angels, Uncanny X-Force, and a new Marauder series, as far as I'm aware of. And I'm glad that this is happening now rather than later because the X-Men needed this so bad. Especially with Marvel Legacy starting off a little weird for the X-Men because at first it kind of had me like, okay, where are we going? But getting into House of X, where we jump in one month in the past from what is actually current day in the storyline and when we see what happens here it shows us that all the events that have taken place from the beginning of house of x up to this point as far as life number 10 and year number 10 that these main events have taken place over the course of one month and through it all in this flashback if you will we finally see more of mctaggart with magneto and charles xavier in a section of kokoa that is professor x's secret cradle which is titled mora's no place and so now here's the thing with us seeing this because with us seeing Mora here and us getting this confirmation that this is actually a place under Krakoa, but the interesting thing on top of this is that we know that there are more people there or more mutants hiding, if you will, in this location. And I mainly say that because Hickman has hinted to us earlier in this series about there being rumors in Krakoa of Forge being under Krakoa. And so now in House of X issue six, now that we know of Professor X's secret cradle and more specifically the portion belonging to Mora, it then starts to beg the question like, okay, where's Forge? Does he have no space is there is no space for charles and however many others which are things that are still left unanswered at this point which i'm very sure we'll get to later with so many other x-men titles rolling out but i do appreciate the flashback allowing us to see this because personally i have many curiosities going forward about when will namor get involved and us later on seeing the involvement of the shiara empire but at this point in time which is still one month ago it's here where we see that announcement which charles xavier had given to the humans which had occurred four days prior to the events in house of x issue number one but it's now when we get issue six that we see exactly how that played out because at this point in time when charles announces that the mutants had created a drug that could cure like alzheimer's influenza als and a number of cancers overnight and how his dream and his vision was to just give this to mankind which was very much true prior to more mctaggart and the new discovery of her mutant powers which in house of x has brought the mutants to the point of okay this is the way that it needs to be done and it's here where charles tells the world that these pharmaceuticals are yours but you gotta give us two things in return. With the first being the humans accepting the island of Krakoa as the nation state for mutants all across the world, which is one of those things to where when we start talking again about the Quiet Council of Krakoa, which we'll be doing in just a little bit, but it's one of those things to where it really looks like Hickman is showing us within this flashback, like a glimpse of the Quiet Quiet Council, which operates out of Charles's secret cradle and the people who have access here, like Maura McTaggart, they are the real people running the show. But furthermore, with Charles's announcement, with his request with Krakoa being recognized as a nation state, to where furthermore, anyone who was born mutant, like as soon as their powers manifest, they're granted citizenship to Krakoa, where they can live among mutants, but also, and going to that second request, which was for Krakoa to have his own laws, which pertain to mutants, so that this way, in any future circumstance, if a mutant needed to be put on trial, they would have to go to Krakoa and be trialed there, rather than being sentenced by the rest of the world. And this is one of the biggest things that's been needed because prior to this point when mutants had been placed on trial regardless to whatever crime they committed because they were a mutant they were immediately treated as a weapon of mass destruction which for the humans was the only thing they could really categorize them as because they didn't have any structure within the laws that dealt with this type of thing and neither did they care to make the corrections to try to do this because their priority was protecting the human race and like we had seen recently when Sabretooth had went on trial after being captured by the Fantastic Four at the time we had got a glimpse into some of the new laws that were set in place which made it way easier for the ruling to convict a mutant because just because they're a mutant which showed us when given the opportunity that the humans when they change the laws or pass laws that would determine the outcome in any court case or quote unquote protect citizens all they really were doing were making mutants guilty to a proven innocent and so now fast forward to current day slightly over one month after this initial announcement and after all the events we have seen taking place within house of x and powers of 10 as far as the portions pertaining to year number 10 which once again we are in Moira's 10th lifetime and I know I do say that quite a bit when we jump back to here but I feel like I need to anytime we do because 
there's still quite a lot of people in the comments who get confused with the jumping around. But it's cool, I don't mind it at all. But it's here where we get our first real look at the Secret Council of Krakoa, or better yet, the Quiet Council of Krakoa, which we talked about for a little bit in the past couple videos, but this is our first time actually seeing everyone at the table. Well, almost everyone. And so now the way that this works, amongst the table you have 12 seats, and amongst those 12 seats, they're divided into four groups who will take the lead for a season, with the summer being Nightcrawler, Jean Grey, and Storm, the autumn which is Professor X, Magneto, and Apocalypse, and I'm sure when they put this together they were like, okay, we have to put Apocalypse here, next to Charles and Magneto, because if he sat anywhere else, he probably would have been like, man, y'all try to downplay me, I ain't having that, and I really feel like that's why Apocalypse is with the autumn group. And so now for the winter, you have Mr. Sinister, you have Exodus, and you also have Mystique. The spring, which is like all members of the Hellfire Club. And here we have the White Queen, Emma Frost, with also the Black King, Sebastian Shaw, who she didn't have much of a choice in giving this seat, with Charles and Magneto demanding that Sebastian Shaw sit here, even with it being against Emma Frost's request. But we do see this additional seat, which is like a sign of her counter offer when she did request that there be one additional seat, which we'll see later that she'll have a Red King sit in his chair. And it could be Alan Wilson, we really don't know who's gonna sit there yet. But next to this table, where the seasons represent when which group would lead, and when I say lead I mean more so in that season that group would determine major decisions like how they would handle external conflicts and the laws of Krakoa as well so they couldn't go to one season and just be like okay bump all this we in the lead we taking all y'all out because if anybody might do this it might be winter or spring but the seasons really just represent a majority vote for a limited time only and so right next to this table you have two other parts the first which is just titled Krakoa which is made of two people Cypher and Krakoa this portion of the quiet council is year round and for obvious reasons being that this whole thing is happening in Krakoa. And ultimately the input from the Krakoa division, or if Krakoa itself wanted to relay any information, it would speak through Cypher to share with the others. And so now last but not least, on the other side of the round table, you have the great captains. And amongst those captains, you have Cyclops, Gorgon, Bishop, and Magic. And so now as for the great captains, their task is mainly just to defend the state. And with the great captains, while they're in these meetings, they do have to side with the vote of the full council. But outside of here, when they step into the field, they're allowed to make any decision decision they see necessary, and perhaps maybe not a decision too radical, but even if so, if they can come back to the council and justify the means of that call, then this particular bylaw would protect them from any Krakoan sentencing. And so now one of our first examples of seeing the Quiet Council in action is actually in Judgment, which much like Nightcrawl expresses, it's one of those things that just has to be done within a civilized society. Because with large numbers and especially growing numbers, some people are going to step out of line. And to much surprise, the first person who crossed that line was Sabretooth which really wasn't much of a surprise. One, because of who he is and his history, but also within this council meeting, we get even further confirmation that he had directly disobeyed the orders of Magneto back when he did the data heist with Mystique and Toad to where Magneto mentions he gave him strict instructions and Sabretooth intentionally did not listen. And as it turns out for his sentencing, cause there has to be some type of punishment because the decision they make here sets the tone. And when the council just recently coming up with their three laws in the first meeting, with the first stemming from a suggestion from Nightcrawler, when he suggested that they be fruitful and multiply, which turned into the first law make more mutants. And with the second law being murder no man, this dropped Sabretooth into this weird situation of, yeah, this new law came out and you broke it. Which is why we essentially see Sabretooth for his punishment being banished. And with his banishment, he's more so just sedated and locked away under Krakoa, which is better than the death sentence, which by all means isn't something they want to do either, with it one being counterproductive to the first law being making more mutants, but also because Charles doesn't want Krakoa to be like the rest of the world and just having a flat out death sentence, but rather Sabretooth's punishment is just the means for this current time. And so now I also want to mention before I get into the third law, like with the first one being make more mutants, second one being murder no man, but before I get into the third one, I do also want to mention, or more so reminder, like we did find out back in Powers of 10, issue 5 I believe it was, that these different laws and even this structure with the different seasons and the different captains, that this wasn't something that was set in stone. And Hickman had kind of gave us a hint during Powers of 10 that eventually all of this may change, which I'm sure it will much later on as we see the laws evolve and grow, but as for now, this is the way it is for the foreseeable future. And Charles admits that it's not perfect, but the mutants have to do what's needed in order to create a better future for their own race. Because if they don't, no one else will. And so now as for the third law, which is more so just respect this land, with the fact that this land is a living person, that just goes more so into the details of including Krakoa in their decisions and not treating him like property that they own. But ultimately, with what they've accomplished here, it is essentially the birth of a new nation. And let me tell you, man, like the mutants, they celebrated their independence to the fullest. And it's like, man, I can only imagine, like, some of them were just like, yo, I'm finna party so hard, they're gonna have to remake my 
body. <laughs> I'm like, this one's about to be done. Forget it. But of course, of course, there's a process to that. You can't just be remade. Like we talked about before, like someone actually has to die. But also though, like Wolverine at the party, let's talk about Wolverine for a second because he's making sure that everybody who is of age, of course, is drinking. But this also makes me wonder, like what is the Krakoan drinking age? And I mean, from what I can see, Wolverine's making a pretty good call on who he selects. But then again, him, Cyclops and Jean are literally like one week old. Okay, now I know I'm just thinking about this too much. But I also like that when we see Wolverine hand a drink to Tomisha Shido, like when I see that, it's like, okay, now we're making some progress. And so now as for Apocalypse, who's all to himself and like, you know, I'm not partying with those drug dealers but even still he's one of those guys you gotta watch because clearly a lot more is going on in his head than he's actually sharing with everyone else and it really makes me think of that moment within the council meeting when Sabretooth was on trial when first Gina made a statement about killing people who can't come back and how if there's any law about killing this should be it and it makes me think about the response of Apocalypse when Charles asked Apocalypse like what did he think about it because he was like you know I'm not gonna chime in and say who I think should and shouldn't be killed because for Apocalypse that doesn't apply to him because as far as he's concerned he's gonna live forever and for that reason he doesn't want to try to make laws like men or mankind or like humans who stand on the outside point their finger and make laws for people who are not like them and it's for that reason when we see apocalypse here it just puts me in the mindset of how long would he allow the birth of this new nation to continue until the point where he doesn't feel like it aligns with his beliefs and sure right now it does and not perfectly but enough that he'll accept it but how long will it be till one day he's sitting in the meeting and he's like you know what this isn't working for me and so moral of the story is look out for that dude in the corner at the employee party who's just sitting there quiet because he might just jump up one day and be like only the strong will survive and you just be like well all right well here we go but overall within house of x coming to its conclusion we've been given enough information by hickman to at least understand the core of how Krakoa came together and the workings and the structure of the quiet council but i'll also say like with charles and magneto do keep in mind that there's more going on underneath Krakoa in professor x's secret cradle which is where i believe the real orders are coming from with more of his plan being a priority and the quiet council be informed to actually keep the mutants quiet and give a resemblance of order amongst the more powerful mutants much like apocalypse himself because the thing is like if you make him think he's in charge and you give him a seat at the council which isn't like a fake seat they do and they will execute the laws for Kokoa and sustain order within that country and when the time comes magneto and charles they play their roles but ultimately the ones with more of mctaggart that is the group who's originally calling the shots and apocalypse may already be figuring this out and i got a feeling that pretty soon we'll be seeing exactly how that pans out but that'll do it for this one guys let me know your thoughts about house of x and do you feel like hickman gave us enough information to little information like i really want to know how you guys feel about it like after this chapter is closed moving forward but let me know your thoughts down below and we'll do it again in the next one all right later